Now, typically we're more interested in the movement of many charges rather than just a single charge. So now let's consider a differential volume of charge, which I'll draw here as a cube. So this is a differential uh, volume of charge. So there's a volume charge density and the amount of charge is rho V times dV. dV is the volume of that charge, that, uh, that cube. With the charge density evenly distributed within the volume. So let's say that this volume of charge is moving here in the U direction and there's a background magnetic field that is to the right. It's going to feel now collectively a, a force, a Lorentz force. And so we have dQ for a single charge in the Lorentz force becomes in the, in the equation for calculating the Lorentz force becomes rho v dv. And so plugging this into the Lorentz force equation, we get df is equal to rho v dv uh, times u crossed with v. And so that becomes rho v u crossed with B D V. Now I'm writing it this way because we're going to consider the units for rho v u. Now before I do that, the direction uh, for the Lorentz force here on this volume of charge is upwards. So this will be df here. So now let's consider the units for rho v times u. For rho v, we have coulombs per uh, meter cubed and for u it's the speed so it's meters per second sorry this is meters cubed so wait a minute if we're multiplying coulombs per meter cubed by meters per second then we're going to have meters in both the numerator and in the denominator so if we cancel the meters in the numerator and the denominator then we're going to get, for the units, we're going to get coulombs per second times meters squared. Hmm. Well, if we think about what we ended up with here, we have coulombs, the amount of charge in the numerator, per second flowing through some area, some, which will, turns out to be a cross-sectional area. So that is, if we're thinking carefully about this, we can recognize that coulombs per second is amps, and so coulombs per second per meter squared is amps per meter squared, and that is a current density. That's the units for J, which is a vector, has a direction associated with it flowing through that cross-sectional area given by meters squared. So, in other words, we can replace this rho v u term by just j. Now this is for a differential volume of charge, charge uh, moving charge. So if we were to integrate, we could get the total f on all of the charge together. We'd have to integrate over that total volume and we would take J crossed with V, dV. Sorry, I'm running out of room there. Now our satellite is in the presence of the Earth's magnetic field, and there are circuits and transmission lines on our, inside of our satellite. So let's see what the effect could be on an unprotected wire on our satellite that is carrying some current. Consider a current density, J, that is constrained here to flowing along a wire of a cross-sectional area dA and in the dL direction. And this is in an externally applied uh, B field from another source, which is going to the right. And this current element, it's of length uh, dL, so it's just an, an, a, a, an element, a very short section, experiences an upward Lorentz force which we can 
calculate to be J crossed with B applied DV. Now we can expand DV to be DA times DL. And we can also write J here as being J without a vector times DL, giving it a direction. Then if we move the DA and DL terms over to be next to J, we'll have J, uh, I'm just going to move the terms over, so we have DA and we have DL times DL hat, and that will be crossed <clears throat> with B applied. Well then we have J times DA, <clears throat> and that gives us I, and I can turn DL, DL hat into a vector DL, crossed with B applied. So this means in the Earth's magnetic field, if we have a wire with a current flowing in it, say we know what I is, and, um, and either the current or the magnetic field is strong enough, the wire will feel a force and it could move if it's not uh, rigid enough or um, secured well enough. It, here it feels a force in the upward direction and so the wire could actually move in response to that force. I wonder if we can use this to our advantage somehow. Looking back on item number one of our design challenge, if we can't blow up enemy satellites, can we instead send something out towards the enemy satellite? Maybe we can control something using Lorentzian forces on a wire and maneuver it over to the hostile satellite? Let's consider this. In any defense system that we might develop, we can't have a straight wire that goes on and on and on forever. So let's consider a geometry that is more compact, a wire loop, as shown here. So consider this wire loop, and it's in a uniform B applied from another source, which in this case, for our design challenge, would be the Earth's, could be the Earth's magnetic field. What will happen to this wire loop in this background magnetic field? 